Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have 7 times the quantity 1 minus 7x squared to the second power equals 1 minus x, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and also show you a graph at the end. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and square 1 minus 7x squared. That's going to give me a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, which is 14x squared. And then let's go ahead and distribute the 7, 7 plus 343x to the fourth power, which is, by the way, 7 cubed, minus 98x squared equals 1 minus x. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side, 343x to the fourth minus 98x squared plus x plus 6 equals 0. Notice that this equation does not have x cubed, which is a good thing. So this is a quartic equation, actually a depressed quartic, and we're going to try to solve this. Now, there's a couple different ways you can approach this. If there are any rational roots, you can use the rational root theorem, which basically says that if there are any rational roots, they're going to be formed by the constant term and the leading coefficient. So you're basically going to be looking at factors of 6 and then all possibilities divided by all possibilities for factors of 343. So for example, 2 is a factor of 6. What is a factor of 343? Remember, that's 7 to the third power. So 7, do you think 2 sevenths is going to be a solution? You can plug it in, test it out, super duper long process, use a calculator, or just use Wolfram Alpha because it's going to solve the equation for you. It's probably going to factor it for you too if it's factorable nicely. Speaking of factoring, we can do the following and as an alternative because sometimes equations don't have rational roots, but we can still solve them. So let's go ahead and write this equation as follows. This is my quartic, and I'd like to write it as a product of two quadratic equations. There's a couple different ways to approach this, but one way to do it is just write it this way, dx squared plus ex plus f. Now, when you multiply and distribute everything, you should be getting something like this, right? With the x to the fourth, for example, if you multiply these two things, that should give you adx to the fourth, which would be equivalent to 343x to the fourth. So you are comparing the powers or the coefficients of x to the fourth. And from here, you can safely say that ad is equal to 343. Now, if a and d are integers, this is fairly easy to solve as a system because you can just guess and check. Constant is formed by the product of two constants, so c times f would give you 6. So that kind of limits the possibilities, but one thing to keep in mind is there is no x cubed on the left. But we're going to get some x cubed from here, like if you multiply these two things, you're going to get aex cubed, and then these two things is going to give you bdx cubed. In other words, the coefficient of x cubed on the right-hand side is going to be ae plus bd, but it's supposed to be 0, which gives you another equation. So put these all together, you should be able to solve this as a system, especially if a, b, c, d, e, f are integers. Okay, that's going to take a while, obviously, to solve. That's why we're not going to use this method, or we're, at least it's going to be incomplete. But again, you can go ahead and test it out. It's a really good practice. What's going to happen is you're going to get a cubic uh, equation from here after you kind of eliminate, uh, you know, substitute whatever all these variables and come up with a single variable equation that is supposed to be cubic. In other words, uh, that's going to be our resolvent cubic, okay? Unfortunately, for quintix and above, we can't find something like that, except for solvable quintix. Of course, there's a huge um, class of quintix. That's another story. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so let's see how the second method works, and now we're going to take a look at a graph, okay? Ready? So we have basically 7 times 1 minus 7x squared, and that is squared, equals 1 minus x. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this equation is that the presence of 7s. So the 7 kind of repeats, and I do see that uh, the square also kind of repeats here. So notice that those are good patterns to keep track of, but this equation is not in the form that we want it to be. So here's what I'm going to do. 
think about a numerical answer like what is uh, 13 minus 5? It's 8, right? Now what happens if I switch 5 and 8? I get the same answer. So in a subtraction problem, you're able to subtract uh, or switch this one and this one. That's what I'm going to do. So in other words, I'm going to subtract this from 1, 1 minus 7 times 1 minus 7x squared squared, and that is going to equal x because I switched them around, right? Great. This is the form that we want it to be. Of course, I did a little bit of manipulation before. I didn't want to make it too obvious, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. This looks like, so we, we take the variable x, we square it, multiply by 7, and subtract it from 1, and we take this variable, square it, multiply by 7, and subtract from 1. Notice what is happening is we're doing this operation or series of operations to x twice. In other words, to keep it simple, let's call this y. So y is equal to 1 minus 7x squared. But that just brings another equation. Notice that from here you get x equals, I started on the right hand side and go this way, 1 minus 7y squared because the whole thing inside the parentheses was called y. And guess what? This is a beautiful system of equations. That's what's powerful about this problem. And that's actually what's meant. These are competition type problems. It could appear in any high school competition. Uh, and that's the goal. They want students to be able to see that, yes, this can be done by substitution easily. Anyways, no, here's what we're going to do. We're going to negate the second equation and add these, which means we're going to subtract the equation. So let's go ahead and clear this up first. And then we're going to go ahead and add these equations, which means subtraction. y minus x, 1 cancels out, 7y squared minus 7x squared. And of course, that can be factored. 7y minus x is 7 times y squared minus x squared, which is the difference of two squares, which I can write as 7 minus y minus x, y plus x. Now, do not cancel out y minus x because that is valuable, you're going to lose something super duper important. Instead, put everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and take this as a quantity and subtract from the right hand side. So that's going to give us 7 times y minus x times y plus x minus the quantity y minus x equals 0. You always want to get a 0, right? Unless there's something else. Now y minus x is a common factor. That's why I said do not cancel that out. And then the other factor is going to give me 7y plus 7x minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. The first factor is beautiful because that gives us y equals x. But what is y? y is a dummy variable. It's temporary, right? What is y? y is equal to 1 minus 7x squared. Let's back substitute. 1 minus 7x squared is y, and that's equal to x. Awesome. This gives us a quadratic equation. You'll see this on the graph. 7x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. Let's go ahead and find the solutions. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1. And then let's go ahead and find the delta here. b squared minus plus 4 times 7, which is 28. So it's going to give us square root of 29 divided by 2 times a, which is 14. So those are two of the solutions, but that's a core tick. Remember, we're supposed to have four solutions. Do they have to be real? No, not necessarily. Well, let's take a look at this one. 7y plus 7x minus 1 equals 0 implies y plus x times 7 equals 1. And then finally, y plus x equals 1 seventh. But what is y? Again, y is equal to 1 minus 7x squared from here. Remember that? So let's replace that with 1 minus 7x squared plus x equals 1 seventh. Let's multiply everything by 7. So we can get rid of the fraction, 7 minus 49x squared plus 7x equals 1. And now put everything on the positive x squared side, minus 7x minus 6 equals 0. This is just another quadratic equation, and if you solve it, you're going to get the other solutions. Let me go ahead and show you the graph real quick because you can do this easy. Here's the graph of these two functions. They intersect at four points, and those values that you see are all the solutions that are four real solutions to this equation.
I want to say system, but this is actually an equation. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.